G'day folks. Well, this is the second DRO I've managed to pick up. Um, this one has much smaller scales than the other one, so I might be able to put it to good use. Only reason I didn't use the uh, Dynamics Research Corporation DRO is because the scales were very big and chunky, and I simply couldn't fit them anywhere on my turret lathe, much less anything smaller. So this one here, I'm hopefully going to end up with the whole tab sliding table assembly and everything, but maybe, maybe not. We'll see how we, well, we get it out of the workshop anyway. Uh, came out of a dead EDM machine anyway. So I'm not going to be able to do much without the scales yet, but we'll just turn it on and see what happens. As you can see, vacuum fluorescent displays. Uh, press reference. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to do anything until I get the scales, unfortunately. But they are VFD displays, vacuum fluorescent displays. Yeah, can't do anything. Should be pretty high resolution considering that's 1.0000. Uh, yeah, the scales on it should be very high resolution. Or well, the encoders, anyway, I should say linear encoders. Oh, I guess the next thing to do is to carefully remove the back and have a quick squeeze inside it. That's what it's all about. Open it up and have a look. On the back, I suppose we've got X, Y and Z scales. Don't know what that's for. Maybe another interface for another component. RS232 serial port or something on it. That's the probably the regulator for the uh, DC supply inside it. Voltage selection, master switch, mains plug, which is a nice locking type. Uh, what does that say? PG16 millimeter gland inlet for some other connection. And a fuse hiding under that little plastic cover. Not bad. Well, this is really beautifully well made. <laughs> You've got to love German engineering. Everything's sealed. The whole housing has a big rubber gasket around it. Um, yeah, it's just really nicely made inside. The board itself is really nicely made. Looks like all this, a lot of this stuff's probably hand soldered. I'd, I'd say probably all is soldered. Maybe the board is initially flowed, but the um, DRO. Um, vacuum displays are uh, hand soldered in by the looks of it along with all the large components that's the uh, voltage regulator got AC input from the transformer as well as a variety of other leads coming out of it each one's fused uh, very old electrolytic capacitors this thing's probably on the last, digit, last two digits of the uh, serial number are 78 and coincidentally the breaker that came off it says 1977 on it so I'd say this is a really late 70s um, EDM machine, electrical discharge machining center uh, just looking at the componentry on it tells me it's probably late 70s early 80s so yeah this DRO is old but it's very well made various ROM chips or EEPROM there um, NEC D7810G chip, various Heidenhain chips there, MUC 3256A-02, there's three of them so I'm guessing they're part, oh, they're part of the scale inputs, they all come off these. So your scale encoders feed into this uh, each section of this circuit for your different axes. Yeah. With X, Y, and Z vertically. Yeah, quite interesting. I imagine the encoders would probably be, uh, you could interchange them, they'll probably all fit into the same socket unless they've got one or two pins out, so you can't get them the wrong way around. That one there is just for an external uh, communications port. I've just disconnected that so I can pull it out. Yeah, very nicely made. Chip on chip number on that one is two one two nine nine two one H. 
various Texas instru Instruments Portugal stamped chips. NEC, that's a six, sorry, eight six three seven H nine. Same with that one there. Eight six one seven H nine. Slightly different. No, it's two H two H. Sorry, two eight six one seven H nines. And that one there's an eight six three seven H nine. Could be part of the display driver, perhaps. Don't know. Crystal there. Hmm. What's that cap called? Fraco, F R A K O, West Germany. 4700 microfarad, 16 volts. And I'll bet you it's still got really low ESR. <laughs> I'm not going to pull it out and test it, but I'll bet you it's still good. As with a lot of this old vintage electronics. So, yeah, that's what's inside one of these. Uh, Hayden Hain DRO can't quite pronounce that but yeah very very well built by the looks of it and that's probably why it's still working perfectly today can't wait to get the scales and the rest of it because this thing's really nice uh, yeah and that's the rest of the EDM not quite as well built with the uh, hand cut heat sinks and hand filed bits and pieces here and there very crude, it's all Taiwanese. Wouldn't surprise me if that DRO is fitted after the fact after this was made. Yeah, piece of junk compared to that DRO. Even the soldering on these boards and everything, the jumper wires, just the way they put it together. You get a little gem like that and a piece of crap like that. <laughs> some of them, yeah, just pulling some of these boards out and having a look at them, you can see that it looks like a rabid monkey's chewed it together early Taiwanese stuff. 70s Taiwanese stuff was like today's Chinese stuff and even then China today is starting to get a little bit better. <laughs> Just goes to show how far we've come. Back in the 50s and 60s even Japanese stuff was regarded as rubbish. Nowadays they're well pretty well ahead of the pack. Although Korea's given them a good run for their money with cars and consumer electronics like Samsung plasma TVs and things. Hmm, it's interesting seeing the race of electronics develop over the years. From 40s stuff all the way up to today, there's been big battles between Japan and China, Taiwan, locally made stuff like Australia and America, which has pretty much faded out to out of existence these days. All the way up to mass-produced Chinese stuff. About $800, $900 gets you a dirty, cheap Chinese DRO kit now. I hate to think what this was worth when it was new, but it would have been a lot. Anyway, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.